A very good morning to everyone. Tuesday 3rd of September and it's already begun in terms of the price movement this morning. The pound sub 120 and obviously that's a, uh, a symbolic and long lasting technical level of focus and support given that was the kind of double bottom that we printed immediately after the initial e-referendum uh, back in 2016 and then we tested 2017 and here we are this morning uh, having a look just below 120 session low printed in cable this morning if I just change my charts over here you can see uh, this morning as UK and European participants have come into the market we had a little test seen at first uh, kind of entrance around 6 6 30 this morning then we broke through uh, at about 7 7 30 we've had a brief retest and it hasn't the low point that we've had so far 1979 uh, has come back up to trade at 96 but sub 120 for the moment so um, increased speculation of course of a looming general election given a speech from boris johnson yesterday and the options the lack of options almost to the left for parliamentary members as they return today, a uh, reopening of the lower house of commons. So we're going to discuss all of this, of course, in more detail shortly. But certainly the pound capturing some attention this morning. The DAX also seeing a little bit of movement. Quite a nice technical level of support, though. It's just running into at the moment after the initial quite staggered, um, fairly normal characteristics, really, of the DAX future. Uh, when it sees these kind of impulses of movement, it tends to be quite staggered. And since the cash open in the last several minutes saw another wave of selling pressure just breaking through the Asia Pacific low point, that's taken us right down in the daily pivots to the S1. And as you can see, an area of support that we've seen over the course of the last two or so sessions. So um, this, again, DAX, quite typical of the kind of speculative nature of the product. You tend to see then people targeting using these daily pivots and technical levels uh, being quite key areas to kind of um, manage actively the trade. Any break of below that level, I'll probably be looking down at around the 30th of August high. That will come in at around 11,880. Uh, and then the lower bound, the S2, starts to bring in then some of the respective highs that were seen on 29th and some of the low points thereafter. So, yeah, worth keeping an eye. Fairly fluid situation this morning. Uh, other asset classes, gold and T notes uh, a touch higher, up six dollars and three ticks respectively. Uh, overall, then, given that slight shift to a, a flight to quality bid, uh, with the U.S. 10-year coming up to. Just keep an eye there technically on the, the R1, which was also encapsulating the, the high point from yesterday late afternoon session. Obviously, uh, very quiet just given the fact that US participants will be returning to market today after their Labor Day extended weekend. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so my moderate risk off, um, as I said, safe haven is a little bit higher. Uh, equity index futures a little bit lower this morning. Um, the main global issue has been headlined still uh, regarding the ongoing trade war apparently sources have suggested that chinese and u.s officials are struggling to agree on a schedule for a planned meeting this month to continue trade talks after washington rejected beijing's request to delay the tariffs that kicked in on sunday so apparently according to unidentified sources um, china had put in a request to delay that of which obviously trump has ignored those uh, tariffs went in to action on Sunday and the oil levy retaliation from China also took place but the point being is now they're struggling to actually pin down a date for them to talk so still more political fallout but <coughs> excuse me I'll try not to uh, cough my way through the, the briefing but the pound another staggered move to the downside again fresh lows so as I'm going through this briefing do keep an eye here because Point being, when it comes to the long-term levels for the pound, this is a daily continuation in the futures. And this was that key area, of course, that we've been looking at for such a long period of time. Now we've got this credible threat of a general election, and obviously Boris came in and around this, if I just put a square here on the right-hand side, so we've had a significant repricing from really towards what, where we were trading at around run 30 handle, all the way down 10 points lower as the prospect of a no deal has increased given the stance that he has put forward. But just looking where we are at the moment, you can see 
uh, I guess this trend line that Sam may have had on uh, kind of scaling down from originally the uh, post well this was actually the, the e referendum that was actually the first uttering of the words hard brexit from Theresa May at the Tory party conference of 2016 we had the retest in Jan 17 so any break here technically there's not a great deal of support and we were looking at the spot price this is obviously what I'm showing you the futures and Sam was saying that support really you've got to go back to 1985 and looking around a 116 handle so <laughs> that's quite a fair distance obviously four points below where we're trading at the moment this trend line here would come in uh, I guess in the interim period uh, but then you'd be looking more psychological to 115 110 certainly uh, as downside levels that's not to say we're gonna get near there today but uh, again the breach of such a long-standing and such a symbolic level here of focus could well open up a decent run of at least a point or two today that would not be uh, wholly surprising I would say and as I'll discuss in a second for me that weakness of the pound all plays into Boris Johnson's hands and I'll explain more my reasoning of why I think that this is absolutely his strategy on that point let's get into this Brexit situation what exactly is happening so Brexit fight raises prospects of a new general election it's the headline story you can see the little red flash of the fact the pound has broken down this, um, through that 120 markers we've just seen on the charts now Prime Minister will risk losing office rather than back down. He gave a public address yesterday, uh, but the Conservative rebels say they're determined to stop a no deal. So let me just show you this. This is the best summary I can really see this morning from the press. It's from the BBC, and it encapsulates the five points of which is really what's happened yesterday. Puts us in the best possible starting position to get ready for what could happen today. So point one. Boris implored his own MPs to back him over Brexit and reject what he said was another pointless delay being proposed by Labour. This is very important as part of the strategy, I think, from Dominic Cummings is trying to, trying to muster up, which is this, the people versus Parliament. It's those parliamentarians that are stopping the will of the democratic vote. It's a miscarriage, it's a misjustice of democracy that these politicians are not fulfilling their mandate to deliver Brexit. This is what the strategy I believe is from Boris Johnson is trying to really uh, put across that message and hence the wording that he's using pointing to the opposition party is delaying what he feels is um, the, the will of the people. Number two, Downing Street told journalists the government expected to table a motion to hold a general election on the 14th of October, if MPs voted to take control of business in the House of Commons later today. Um, I will run through exactly um, what this means in a second, uh, so we're all crystal clear. But essentially, there is a um, something called a Standing Order 24, which is likely to be enactioned when Parliament gets underway later this afternoon, which will allow emergency debates to happen, which is where then the opposition um, parliament or MPs in parliament are going to try and table point four on this list which is a fast tracker bill in commons to contemplate a further delay to Brexit until the 31st of January 2020. Um, the other things that are happening here the government has upped the ante by threatening to deselect some of the most senior conservative conservatives in the party if they defied the party whip this is something we discussed in the briefing yesterday and then the fifth point, meanwhile, across the channel, the European Commission has said it was considering allowing EU countries to apply for cash to cope with the no-deal Brexit using a special emergency fund. So EU kind of holding firm for the moment, not blinking under the Boris bluff, if it is that for the moment. And you would say we're not close enough to the deadline yet. So I'd say point five is unsurprising at this point. To clarify then, why have we arrived at the situation uh, where we are at the moment. So from the political point of view, uh, the legislation to be put forward today in Parliament seeks to tie Boris, Johnson ha Boris Johnson's hand uh, and instructs him to ask the EU for an extension for the Brexit process until the 31st of January of 2020. Now, if the European Council proposes an extension to a different date, 
What this legislation then would do is that the Prime Minister must accept it within two days unless that extension has been rejected by the House of Commons. So in other words, the power to decide will lie with the Members of Parliament and not the government. For the PM, this of course is absolutely cannot happen because he's promised to leave do or die on the 31st of October, come what may. So it would seem impossible that he would ever accept that and then hence the talk then of an early general election because that's why he, Downing Street said if that does happen, which could well be a prospect later on this afternoon, then he has no other choice but to call a snap election. Now for me, this is absolutely going as planned for Boris Johnson. The weakening of the pound only further helps his cause because it makes his argument that the the blocking of Parliament of trying to do what he's doing is causing this deterioration in our currency and is causing more complications for him trying to get the deal over the line and done. And so, so far so good. And I do think this is heading to the general election. So what does that mean? Well, this is the latest poll tracker where we can see the lines representing weighted averages across all of different polls that there are because there's obviously lots of different ones. And what you can see here is the quite, um, well, two, two real key political um, milestones that we've had in recent history. One is the European election. That was when the Conservative Party got absolutely decimated. They came fifth. This is the leading party of our government, came fifth. That is diabolical by anyone's standard. You know? And what happened then? Well, that was the kind of beginning of the end of Theresa May. Uh, at that point Brexit party was the big surprise they came out you know on fire and their performance the only difference is though is that they have zero at this point representation in parliament and so hence the reason why we've had this narrative shift into going quite hard Brexit no deal or die situation from Boris Johnson as he tries to encapsulate the risk or counteract the risk of the fact that he could lose, the the Conservative vote could could uh, split, and he, some could be lost to the Brexit Party. So, in order to make sure that that, that momentum is caught <laughs> and that situation does not materialise, he needs to talk a very hard game. Now, Boris Johnson becomes Prime Minister, and there is a, a quite clear and immediate bump up in Conservative popularity. Labour has done absolutely zero. They've just gone sideways, whereas the Conservatives have really pulled away quite substantially as the Brexit party has faded. Basically, after the week or two from the parliamentary election, the Brexit party, Nigel Farage has had a couple of LBC radio appearances, but really, he's done his job. He's got his nice little team around him now at Brussels. That's it. Farage doesn't want to be Prime Minister, and he doesn't want a full government to be sitting in Parliament every week on week and so for him it's done and therefore that's been reflected in the polls brexit without any pr like the machine that was underway in may in the lead up to european elections as that's faded away basically brexit party has faded with it and as such it's almost a perfect divergence as the popularity fades from brexit it goes straight into the conservatives why? Because this ain't a Theresa May government, it's a hard Boris Johnson government. And so this is all lining up in addition with all of these public spending promises that Boris and his yes men team that he surrounded himself with are saying. And so hence the reason why this is all going as planned for Boris to pull the trigger and by calculation at this point could come out with a pretty firm majority government of which he can then go back to Brussels and cut a deal. So, timings. What have we got to look out for today? I was looking at the parliamentary website. <coughs> What's on the agenda? And it's 2.30 when really the main chamber of the Commons reopens for business. Remember, the whole reason why this is happening is because of the very tight time frame given the prorogation that's already in place now for Parliament which can happen in the next week. And so today is going to be key because today is going to go back to uh, standing order 24 and the push for point four on this agenda here 
which is Parliament trying to fast track through a bill to push this um, idea of um, legislation to tie the Prime Minister's hands and delay Brexit until 31st of January. If that goes through, Boris then triggers the election at that point. Other things then to be aware of on this front is looking at the timings here. A lot of this isn't going to really kick off, it seems, until much later this afternoon. So I'd say if you got in that short at 120, I'd say you're probably best keeping that position on. Uh, I think just you've got to sit tight, I'm afraid, for the rest of the day. There's probably not a great deal of risk around blips in the dollar. Obviously, you've got to keep an eye out for any trade-related comments coming out of Trump and so on, but I think that we kind of know the status quo there. Um, the only thing I'd look out for is uh, we seem to be in a negative state in that trade situation. So any positive olive branch type conciliatory comments from either side uh, could have a meaningful impact on markets, given the fact, as I said, the general cross-asset class mix this morning is one of a risk-off moderate sentiment and so a positive trade comment could certainly fire things up in reverse so profit taking on those shorts in the equity space and the reversal in gold and and t-notes so do be aware of that but yeah i think overall i would expect the pound to potentially trade heavy and just drift south particularly interested when the u.s come in not that they see brexit as uh, more important than the trade talks but technically obviously having seen the breach and the spot in the futures at 120 I think people will be interested stateside in this this situation uh, but it could be a late afternoon show early evening if you're going to be trading the pound before we get the real juicy details of what exactly is going to be happening we could finish the day with a general election being tabled by the prime minister that would not be a shock if that did happen um, okay the other point just <coughs> finally to explain some of the, the other pressure on the pound, let's not forget as well, economically, um, we had yesterday UK manufacturing activity contracted in August for the fourth consecutive month to the lowest level since 2012. Brexit uncertainty mounting, fears of recession deepening, business confidence falls to a series record low. So whilst all these political um, movement that's happening at the moment, if you are a business, there's no way you can commit any type of capital for an foreign investor looking to invest in the UK. There's such uncertainties at the moment that um, there's absolutely no surprise that these types of figures are uh, decreasing to multi-year lows. Uh, that really does, again, heap the pressure on the, on the politicians to get some kind of resolution, whatever that, you know, come what may. Okay, let's move on. Other than the trade talks and Brexit, the other thing I just wanted to mention was the equity market. JP Morgan are banging that drum like there's no tomorrow. Uh, I almost feel like I'm a part-time JP Morgan salesperson. Um, but I thought I'd point it out again um, because not just JP Morgan, Bank of America have also come out with a similar type of note uh, on Friday. And JP have said it's finally time to buy stocks despite the trade woes. If I just skip down to the bottom of this, these are their, their points. Here are some of the potential global equity drivers cited by JP. US Federal Reserve is easing, but high yield spreads or jobless claims aren't spiking. Global activity momentum is likely to improve going into the end of this year. Profit margins in the second half could surprise positively. Equity valuations on PE basis are uh, under, undermined, under, undermanding. So that's a typo there. Uh, and investor I'm positioning sure remains defensive without inflows, which is contrarian bullish signal. So we've kind of gone over this before. They've been backers of this call for the last couple of weeks, but I thought I'd just point it out again. Um, a little bit of a division on Wall Street, I'd say. Uh, not the biggest names, but UBS, Legal in general, they've been much more bearish, looking to uh, rejig their portfolios to position out of, uh, to become underweight equity exposure, whereas JP uh, and Bank of America seemingly just filling their boots at the moment. Um, but I would say, as discussed about a week ago, I think that those two 
uh, or those players in, or in the market are looking at different time horizons. And I think in the short term, I think JP and Bank of America could well be right. Whereas in the, in the medium to long term, I'd prefer UBS's uh, strategy in terms of portfolio composition. And elsewhere, final thing I'll talk about before I hand you over to Sam. We had the RBA interest rate decision overnight. No, no shocks there. If you actually look at the Aussie currency, it, is, it has seen a decent bump higher overnight um, after the result came out. Um, they kept rates on hold as expected at 1%. There's obviously a very small amount in the market looking for potential cut. Uh, that didn't materialize. And if I look at one of the main phrases that they said, they said um, they left policy unchanged as it waits to see how a combination of interest rate cuts and tax relief impact the economy. While Sydney property prices already showed renewed strength. And remember, it's the housing market which has caused a lot of um, concern for policymakers in Australia. And as such, stabilization there, in fact, uh, property prices going back higher, has been, um, has kind of led to the idea that potentially no further cuts for the moment, despite what had been building in <coughs> a few weeks ago, possible multiple rate cuts. Um, so, yeah, if anything, um, less dovish than expected rather than being outright hawkish, has led to appreciation of the Aussie from overnight. And that, in the short term, outweighing any negativity from the trade situation. Okay, as you can see, I'm struggling to talk without coughing, so uh, let me hand you over to Sam and he can finish things off on the tech side. Okay, guys, good luck if your trading breaks at headlines. Hi, guys, good morning. Yeah, pound struggling. Uh, and it's, uh, it's going to be very, very important today just to to keep an eye on, on where we close, where we close the day. Is it below 120 or above? Um, however, you know, opportunity-wise from then for the short might be, uh, might be long gone, uh, the way it's looking at the moment. Uh, as as I, I sent, said to, to Anthony before, the next real key level is from the, the 80s uh, somewhere. Uh, so quite a, a way down. And, and you've got to imagine there's stops here. You've got to imagine from a psychological point of view, now we're below 120. We close the day below there, and really uh, it's, uh, it has probably got a bit more to go. Um, not to say, you know, this time in six months, I don't think we'll be higher. Uh, but certainly you've got to trade what you see here. And below 120, the classic there, not bad, to, down to the previous low of the day. Um, not looking too good. And Euro pound as well. We have a, a quick look over here. Is, just coming up to quite a, well, you can see the line is still pretty much drawn on here. Um, a key point, I would argue it's there. So just uh, around 91.45 uh, and a half on the futures. Um, a bit of a, a breakdown point that we had on the 22nd. Again, close above there and even the euro, which is under considerable pressure elsewhere, could find a bit of strength here. Euro dollar is uh, drifting as well. Big data to the downside yesterday into the afternoon, bit of recovery overnight, but again, it's struggling. And, and uh, obviously it's on, on the lows uh, of the year. And so the dollar is, is strengthening. And, and like Ant said, obviously gotta be aware for any comments today on the trade side. And we had a few from, I think Trump, was it yesterday or, or something to do with the trade? And, and it's just not buying the weaker dollar at the moment. So you gotta, I think here again, go with that flow and looking for opportunities to to go short. And I think with you know markets like the the euro here, you're, you're happy to to stay short short as long as you know trend lines like this hold. And obviously that looks like it could if it was to come up shortly, mark up as well with the the previous low of the day at one oh nine seventy uh, around there. Uh, as well, so quite a key area, maybe intraday. Happy to stay short euro dollar as long as that holds, and uh, if not, then obviously you've got some other key resistance points uh, to come into play. But every time we push higher, we're just met with uh, a big move to the to the downside uh, over the coming days uh, as well. Equities, we talked uh, for a while yesterday, and every other briefing there has been just about the importance of this area here. Call it, I guess, 29.50 down to 43. Just such a key, key zone. So just to reiterate again, wouldn't really fancy being long, like JP Morgan is saying, unless we can close above there. Just because the similarity to this trying to trade to October, November, December last year uh, is is uncanny. Uh, so unless we close above 
not really too interested. And if we do, I think uh, a medium term trade to the all time highs is on the cards. However, at the moment, uh, we are trading below and uh, again held very well yesterday morning. And I guess you could you start to just see if there's any trend lines that come into play. Not really as of yet, but you can maybe look to, to get those third tests uh, around, uh, well, potentially just below that S2, which has acted as pretty good support uh, as well from the previous high that we had on the 28th, as, as Ant was talking about. A break below there, then suddenly we are drifting down uh, again. Uh, it's obviously worth getting the, the cue from what happens in uh, European equities this morning, but unless we get above that, that 29.43 um, and 50, uh, I would remain of the bias that we could be drifting lower. Similar to the uh, the euro in that uh, you might be happy to stay short today as long as this trend line holds. So you can see from yesterday's high to this morning, uh, to the, sorry, the, the Labor Day high to then today's high uh, as well. As long as that holds, then yeah, uh, you'd be happy to go short a break of that. And sure, you get a bit of reversal pivot from yesterday and those highs uh, from yesterday morning and uh, Friday afternoon could well be uh, of option. Gold, we talked about yesterday being in two different ranges, uh, having broken out the uh, the top part or the bottom part of the one that we held from the 26th to the 29th. We're still within that, and uh, that's how I would look at this market. You know, buyers hot in, in charge of 15.25 and sellers uh, 15.41 breaks either way. You could see the push back up towards those highs of the year. To the downside, then you can be even the way gold moves, looking at 1500, despite there being quite a lot of previous levels of resistance to act as support below. So for gold, it, for me, it's, it's just a case of holding firm on, on that and, and waiting for the market to really tell us what, what's going on. Obviously, you'd expect the volume to, to slightly, you know, increase after Labor Day yesterday uh, as well. Quick look over at oil uh, as well. You can see here not too much in the way of movement from uh, yesterday uh, but certainly and I was just looking again on the longer term chart and we've said this before in, in that just waiting for the real move in, in oil to, to come and, and that could be when it breaks out of the trend line to the upside or the, the downside as well. Just going back from the, the August low, we're not too far from a potential third test of that trend. And as well from the upside, the April highs, uh, not too, well, we weren't too far yesterday anyway, from uh, from potentially reaching the, the top end of that. So this is a, a daily chart on oil. I think there's no harm in, in just waiting for uh, a break either way. To the downside uh, from a medium term trade, there's that uh, August the 26th low and then obviously the low that we had back on the, the beginning uh, of uh, well, middle of January and then uh, beginning of June could come into play to the upside if it breaks through uh, well you'd imagine uh, a decent run higher towards 60 but similar uh, with those recent highs you see two equities you're starting to get that correlation coming into play so keep an eye on, on those two as we go through uh, the day uh, as well uh, the DAX just starting to recover and this is a you know we've already had I guess if it's on a five minute uh, a test of that whole area uh, you can see marked up so so quite key from a, an intraday point of view what happens around here uh, does the DAX decide to, to hold here and actually equity start to push lower or a break through and it turns to be in a, a false break and actually this market then pushes higher and equities in the US follow suit so quite a key one to keep an eye on now for, for the DAX uh, obviously um, other things going on certainly in the currency space and just bringing in the the euro as I you know, did this chart for the for the strategy yesterday let's move this away I think one to keep an eye on would be the retest of this trend channel again doesn't look like it's going to come into play for now uh, but something to just to focus on on any push higher and then you are looking really at the next levels down at 108.60 from May 2017 uh, not completely out of the question that they, that can come over the next couple of weeks um, and obviously like the pound again you'd be keeping a close eye on where we close the day and week uh, as well any questions as usual please uh, let us know trading live or uh, on YouTube uh, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty interesting day for the pound uh, really could be a big movement either way and keep a close eye on obviously where we finish as well Hope you'll have a good trading day and I'll catch you later on.